Broly has always been one of my favorite Dragon Ball Super characters, and so I thought, what would happen if I put his rage into the world of My Hero Academia, into the world's protagonist, Izuku Midoriya? And so, I sat down, scripted this video for a bit, and I finally came up with a final product of what if Deku was Broly's reincarnation. Enjoy. Hey Ross, sauce it up. Okay, so like every other what if, this is pretty much going to be starting the day of Izuku's birth. I mean, it's pretty basic, it's nothing too crazy. Let's just say that the day of Izuku's birth, he pretty much wakes up and, you know, Inko is happy, Sashi's happy, and they take him home, right? The day that he's born, it was kind of strange because some strange occurrence actually ended up happening that day that they weren't able to identify whether it was the cause of Deku or it was the cause of some hero incident outside that was going on potentially. Now, what happened? Basically, for a very, very brief moment when the doctors were pulling Izuku out, like his outburst of like just crying basically made it so that his aura just flared out, right? Like his rage was able to literally shake the building, right? And with him shaking the building, the second that he got taken out, like he was, he had his eyes closed, so they couldn't tell, but he was in his wrathful form. He was literally in his wrathful form the day he was born. And with this comes like them not really knowing what happened, but Izuku was pretty much the root cause of everything. So he goes home and let's just say that Izuku grows up like every other kid. Now, obviously, Izuku is going to be having a bit of a fluctuating power level, but for every other kid, he is a whole lot stronger than everybody else. I mean, Izuku was able to lift couches and fridges with one arm when he was like four years old. It was completely insane. They always just assumed that Izuku had some sort of super strength quirk until they noticed that Izuku was not just strong, but he was incredibly fast. And not to mention that Izuku just, it seemed as if he was just like glowing with potential. Izuku was just gift, this gifted child, right? And Izuku was always told that he was gifted and he was told that he was going to essentially be destined for great things by the doctors and stuff like that. And because Izuku was deemed to have a super strength quirk or maybe an enhancement quirk, everybody thought that he was pretty cool for that. Even Bakugo himself was really, really friendly and kind to Deku just because of the simple fact that he also looked up to Deku because, you know, could you it, just think about it like this. You have a friend, he has, he's really cool, he has superpowers, you're obviously going to give him a little bit more respect. And that's pretty much what Bakugo did. And it was to the point of meat riding sometimes. But eventually one day would come when Bakugo would be in class and suddenly pop, 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 his explosion quirk would have activated. This would lead Bakugo to think to himself that now he can finally keep up with Deku. Now he can finally do the same things that he can do. He can maybe even get on his level or even more. So Bakugo for the next couple of months would pretty much begin to try to test Deku, slowly like doing little things to him just to see like how far he can take it and you know how much Deku would just let slide. Like he would start by taking his crayons, then he would like he would like push him or like make jokes about him and be like, sorry, Deku. And Deku would always be like, it's fine, Bakugo, don't worry. You know, sometimes Deku would be walking with his lunch and like Bakugo would just throw it on the ground and he'd be like, sorry, Deku. And, you know, Deku would just continue letting things slide, right? Because the kid's nice, you know, he's he's not going to be a rude dude who's just going to be like, ah, oh, you dropped my napkin, like I'm going to hit you, you know what I mean? So he's a cool kid. He's still a small child at, at, at the end of the day and nothing really crazy is happening, right? But after a few couple of months, Bakugo would just let it get to him, right? He would train with his quirk, he would realize that explosions are quite powerful, and he would think, hey, Izuku has strength, but if I just blow him up, then he can't beat me, right? So one day, he would pretty much go up to Deku and shoot an explosion at his face, right? And Deku, after having this explosion in his face, would shoot to the ground and be like, Bakugo, what was that for? And, you know, Bakugo would be like, hey, I just wanted to know if who was stronger. And Deku's like, it doesn't matter, Bakugo. We're both supposed to be friends. And Bakugo's like, yeah, but I just found out who the stronger one of us is. And he just walks away with his little friends. And Izuku just sat there wondering like what he even did to provoke this. Like he thought him and Bakugo were friends. 
And so Izuku just pretty much is like, whatever. And due time skip, we would basically be in, let's say, we're now going to jump to sixth grade, right? They're going to be in sixth grade. And Izuku would just be chilling with his friend group. This time he isn't ostracized or a loser. He has tons of friends and people still believe that he's very, very strong. Of course, Deku, whenever they're in PE class and gym class, would smash through every record. I mean, his physical and speed is just incredible. Not to mention that over the last couple of years, Izuku definitely would have discovered the ability of flight randomly one day when he ended up jumping a little too high and realized that he didn't hit the ground. He kind of closed his eyes and realized he was floating. Then he fell on his head and I was like, ah, you know, that really hurt, right? And from there, he kind of just began practicing that. And now he's pretty skilled at flying, punching, and, you know, running. Those are the main things that Izuku has right now. He still hasn't discovered a key control quite yet, like shooting key blasts and stuff like that, because that's going to come at a later date. But what would happen is basically Zuku would be in the cafeteria, right? The dude walks up, you know, he looks at the lunch lady. He sees the options that are for food and he sees the chicken sandwiches. On this day, you know, let's just say that he's a little hungrier than usual. So he grabs one of the sandwiches and when nobody's looking, like he would just turn left, right, grab another one, shove it into his pocket right and from here izuku goes on to pretty much go to the front pay for his food and then you know sit down at his lunch table with his friends when izuku would be there bakuga would walk over to him and would pretty much grab his tray of food and just throw it onto the ground izuku looks at bakugo and he's like bakugo why do you gotta be such a dick and bakugo looks at him and goes what'd you say nerd would you just call me i should blow you to heaven come right now and Deku is just like, whatever, Bakugo. He then goes on to grab another sandwich from his pocket. And Bakugo quite literally like spits in Deku's. He literally spits in Deku's face, bro. That's the ultimate disrespect. So Deku is like, he smears it off of his face and he takes a bite of a sandwich. And he's just like, leave me alone, Bakugo. And Bakugo then smacks it out of his hand, right? Q. She threw my burger out the car. Uh, I don't know if you guys get that reference, but basically, um, Bakugo smacks the burger out of like Deku's hand, right? And Deku's like, my chicken sandwich. No, no, how? You know, no, no. He, he like in, in cute anime Dragon Ball fashion, he's like, how dare you? Like, it's almost like a moment where Boma got slapped by Beerus pretty much. And Deku just goes crazy. He's like, my sandwich. You know what I mean? And his eyes, they turn into their wrathful form. His aura explodes. And the, like, the people around him get sent flying. Bakugo gets sent crashing to the wall. And he stands up and he looks at Bakugo and he's like, you know, Bakugo, I've let a lot of things slide over the years, but not again. He rushes to Bakugo and literally slaps him onto the ground. And Bakugo has no answer. He tries to throw an explosion at Deku and hold his knees up and try to kick at him. But Deku literally grabs him with one leg and throws him to the other side of the cafeteria. And Bakugo goes crashing out the window, mind you. Deku from here literally just looks at the looks at the wall that's there and just opens his mouth and goes Poof! And a gigantic blast, a mouth beam would shoot from his mouth, right? And it almost hits Bakugo had it not been for his quick reaction time, right? Bakugo jumps out of the way and Deku flies out from the crater that he had just created in the wall, right? He looks at Bakugo and it's at this moment that all of his friends go up to him and they're like, Deku! And Deku looks around and he finally snaps out of it and he's like, I'm sorry. He looks at Bakugo on the ground who has genuine fear in his eyes because he, he felt like he was going to die, bro. Like... He's never seen Izuku this mad and never knew that he had this much power. Deku ragdolled him. He showed him that the difference between he and Izuku was monumental. It's not something to laugh at. Deku's strength difference to Bakugo is literally the difference from the ground to Mount Everest. That's how high the difference is. It's probably even higher than that. And keep in mind, Izuku's power is, is so fluctuating. Like It could be at zero... And then it could go to 100 real quick, just based off of his rage. And that's something that just happened. Izuku rushes out of the cafeteria. And so the next day that comes around, Bakugo pretty much ends up making a story about how Deku picked on him and how Deku's the mean one. So everybody begins to kind of be very wary of Deku because they don't want him to have outbursts. So they all start trying to like keep away from him. And the friends that he does have do stay friends with him, but they're just a little more worried. So Izuku kind of spends the last couple of years at his school kind of feeling bad for what he did to Bakugo. So he doesn't exactly end up trying to defend himself and say what really happened. And so, you know, he just lives day by day activities just like any other kid would, right? But eventually, one day, he would be picked up by his mother, right? His mom, Inko, just scoops him. And she's like, so, Izuku, how was school? 
he looks at her and he's like good and from here he pulls a you know look out the window and just stare out you know kind of like that iconic scene that everybody does like they'll sit in the window and they'll kind of look a little sad he looks up at the at one of the rooftops and there it is one of those gigantic billboards that just says fandom on it and he's like fandom what's what's that well let me explain. As anime fans, we love to show our support to our favorite shows by rocking anime apparel. But something I'm pretty sure we can all agree on is it's so expensive. So I've partnered up with Fandom to bring you all affordable, high quality anime merch that you are sure to love. And if you use my code Zether at checkout, you can even get an extra 10% off the already affordable merch. Keep in mind, it does come from overseas sellers, so its sizing is going to be different since it's overseas. That said, let's get back into the video. You guys like what I did there? You see, like, like that little jump. <laughs> Anyways, jumping back into the story, we pretty much picked the story off the day that the teacher would pretty much end up telling everybody about what they're going to be doing for the rest of their lives. He begins to kind of joke around with the class and be like, so here are your career aptitude tests. And he's like, like but suddenly the teacher just throws him up into the air and he's like, I know you all want to become heroes. And Izuku, you know, he does definitely want to become a hero, but he's just become more wary of his own powers. Eventually, the day would come, though, however, when Izuku is simply just chilling in class, right? And uh, essentially, what would end up happening is that, you know, he is just sitting there and Bakugo would just stand up on his desk. And essentially, everything that happens in canon would happen with the exception of Izuku being mistreated by Bakugo. Because Bakugo hasn't spoken to Izuku in so long due to the fact that of what happened in sixth grade, right? He completely, like, like shut him off. But Izuku, after Clash, grabs his bag and goes underneath the tunnel just like usual. Now, I would try to make a big deal out of the sludge villain attacking Deku, but it's really not going to be. Just because, I mean, it's going to be relatively easy for Deku to handle a sludge villain. I mean, let's say that the sludge villain does get onto Deku. He expands his aura. Boo-hoo, sludge villain's done. Splattered everywhere. And that's what essentially happens. All Might then comes in, bottles the villain up, says what's up to Deku, Deku fangirls, yes, I said fangirl, and then All Might jumps off. And just for the plot of the story, I'm going to be saying that All Might still does drop the bottle and Bakugo does end up getting pretty much captured in the sludge, right? Bakugo gets captured in the sludge. And this time around, when All Might arrives and Deku gets there as well, you know, both of them are watching what's happening and Deku's just about to act when Bakugo screams, let me go! And he shoots a powerful explosion that blasts the sludge off. And he finally realizes that's what he has to do. So he just pours all of his sweat. Like he's sweating right now because he's being like heated up and his explosions and there's just fire everywhere. So Bakugo's just sweating and sweating and sweating. And we're just going to be saying that for story purposes, he's a lot stronger than he is in the original just because he has Deku and he's been wanting to close that gap for years now. But even now, he still is aware that that gap is still massively large but what would end up happening is he's able to snatch that villain off of himself and then he flies up into the air and just goes you want to take care of my body and the people in the heroes are like kid get down from there and bakugo just goes howitzer impact and he comes flying in and blows the sludge villain at kingdom come and all might just watches that act of heroism and he's like that's my successor and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys saw that coming from the moment that I had Bakugo free himself instead of Deku. But yeah, Bakugo is going to be the successor of One for All. And you guys might be like, bro, why Bakugo? Like, why? Well, first of all, it's it, like it, it's for a good cause. Trust me, guys. Trust me, guys. Like, he's still not going to be stronger than Deku, but it's for like, like it's for this kind of story that I want to go for. Just trust me, guys. Just bear with me. OK, don't click off the video yet. But Anyways, the 10 months would happen and All Might would train with Bakugo instead of Deku. And during these 10 months, Deku would pretty much just be hit in the gym every single day. And essentially, Izuku, his body shape is like, he's tall. But he's nowhere near the size of like Broly in the actual anime. But he is pretty big. He's like, let's say he's at around Ida's height and he is like very muscular. Or let's say he's a little smaller than Ida, but he's like very muscular. He's not as muscular as Broly, obviously, but let's say it's it's like more compact, right? It's kind of like how Broly looks when he's like not enraged. So he's like kind of skinny, but like a little bit even more than that. And just because of his age, like his muscles haven't developed that far. But, you know, let's just say that he's around that like level of like build. Like he has like a little bit of a Vegeta build, right? Like he still looks muscular. But, you know, it doesn't look massive, right? But regardless of that, 
Deku would end up training during those 10 months and you know he works on his flying his punching his you know his kicks and stuff like that and what Zuku would pretty much end up doing during these 10 months is weighted training as well as some martial arts to come you know to compete with everything that he's doing he would also end up kind of uh continuing to work on his key blast and stuff like that and would even end up developing you know the key blast that Broly would use and honestly when it comes to the key blast that broly uses i'm really not sure what his what is like his key blast names are i'd have to look that up really quick um let's see let's see Let, let's you know we're both about to find something out really quick let's see broly's broly's blast google what, what what's the name what's the name um eraser cannon eraser cannon oh that's pretty cool yeah yeah that, that sounds awesome eraser cannon yeah that's sick but basically what what he would work on like mostly would just be those key blasts that he can shoot from his mouth to have that be a regular thing kind of like how nappa does it and he would also work on small miniature key blasts that he can shoot from his hand but he's mostly a brawler so he's more like an all might type of combatant and he obviously does have the um the uh what what what, what was it again the buster cannon i think uh Oh my god, the fact that I already forgot it, even though I literally just read it. it yeah, the eraser cannon. Yeah, eraser cannon. Yeah, so he masters on that. And that's really all that he really works on, honestly. He just gets a lot more stronger when it, when it comes to his like, power level and stuff like that. And obviously, he's never going to reach his full potential until he gets like truly enraged the day that he maybe snaps into a Super Saiyan. But I don't even think that he'll be needing that at all in this series. I mean, everybody here is so weak compared to him already that... Who knows maybe it might happen maybe it might not but regardless of that fact we are going to be jumping back into the story and let's just say that we pick up with the entrance exams right the entrance exams happen and i don't really see the written portion being too difficult for izuku i still think he's going to be a very smart individual so he's going to be passing that with relative ease and when it comes to the robot portion this is where things finally begin to get exciting because what i do see happening here is deku being able to use his flight you know his punching his kicks and stuff like that to essentially just fly through the robots the second that president mike goes go right he flies in and just key blast key blast punch he would grab the robots and fly into the air and like slam them onto the ground and just fly through robots themselves it would be like an omni-man level of just destruction and chaos that he would be putting through and he would be putting on a massive show right eventually what would end up happening is that you know he would begin to learn as he is fighting these robots and like understand their fighting patterns and just get better and better as he goes and eventually the zero pointer would actually be let out when the zero pointer is let out by principal nezu i blatantly just see izuku looking at it and finally being able to use his eraser cannon he charges it up obviously and he just shoots it at the zero pointer blasting the entire top of it off as the zero pointer just collapses behind like to the like it falls backwards and he's able to just fly in grab Araraka, and like bring her to safety and when he grabs Araraka, she like blushes a lot because she feels the muscle and stuff like that. And Izuku was like, are you okay? And she just nods, she's like, mm-hmm. From here, Izuku sets her down and, you know, pretty much just begins to walk away, knowing that he did pretty great. Eventually, he would end up getting his acceptance letter and Izuku would actually get number one when it comes to the robot portion, just because even though Bakugo has one for all now, he's still not going to be as impressive as Deku when he's, you know, trying his absolute best to just destroy, right? It's kind of like a Hulk smash moment, right? But ultimately, Deku would end up kind of um, just going, getting into UA and pretty much reporting for his first day of class. What would end up happening here is we basically get our moment with Izuku being in the uh, being in the classroom and walking in and just kind of being like, yo, guys, like, um, how are you? You know what I mean? Like, or uh, I feel like I was just talking out of my butt for the last couple of seconds. OK, scratch everything that I just said. Deku walks in a classroom. He sits down. He's not really talking to anybody until Araraka walks in and she looks at him and what what, what what did araka say i feel like she would say something along the lines of hey you're the boy who saved me right uh name's broly right and deku just looks at her and he's like yeah that's my name and you know bakugo hearing and seeing that deku got in he just scoffs and he's like 
they just let anyone in nowadays, right? And from here, he goes on to pretty much just listen to Aizawa when he tells him to go outside, and they all take the quirk apprehension test. Now, when it comes to most of the trials, Deku and Bakugo would actually be on an even level when it comes to the things that they're doing. And this would kind of just cause Bakugo's head to just get filled up with this idea that he's finally going to be able to finally destroy Deku. He's finally going to be able to beat him at something. This is just what Bakugo is blatantly thinking to himself just because of the fact that Deku has been kind of taking it easy for the last couple of uh, events, not really going all out fully because he's not enraged. He's calm. So he's just doing his best that he can now. So, you know, it wouldn't be that impressive to Bakugo per se, but, you know, they both would end up getting first and second, respectively, with Bakugo being first because he was tryharding, right? And, you know, Deku just being cool with second place. Eventually, after all would be said and done, Bakugo would walk out with his backpack and bump into Deku and be like, hey, Deku, you know, you remember sixth grade? I'm done being your, I'm done fearing you now. You're gonna go back to being my punching bag really soon, Deku. As from here, Izuku looks at Bakugo with a blank expression and just kind of just is like, whatever, Bakugo. As he walks away and Bakugo just chuckles and he's like, don't forget, Deku, you're second place now. As Deku just walks away and Bakugo's like, pathetic. Okay, so jumping back into our story, pretty much where we left off, we then pick up with two very useful days of UA. I mean, nothing really happens, but all of the students begin to essentially get acquainted with themselves and end up finding their own friend groups. Eventually, though, we do end up having the, you know, the very special and enticing event that I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys were waiting for in part one, which is just the heroes versus villains event. Now, obviously, all my burst through the door like a normal person, right? And, you know, he then proceeds to just start talking to the class and telling them about, you know, what it's like to be a hero and walking them through his own personal journey. He then goes on to pretty much take his moment to shine, smiles, and just reveals the costumes in the walls. Everybody goes crazy, and after this, he tells them that to be heroes, you gotta look like heroes. So, they gotta put them on and meet them outside. Once they do so, he ends up pretty much giving them the lottery tickets, things like that, and they end up pretty much each picking their own little slots and finding out who's gonna be fighting against who. Bakugo would pretty much be praying to end up fighting against Deku because that's what he wants. He wants to show everybody that he's stronger than Deku. By using All Might's quirk, he wants to prove that he's better than him, right? And from here, that's exactly what would end up happening. I mean, Deku would end up getting teamed up with Araraka, and Bakugo would still be teamed up with Ida. This is something that still ends up happening just like it would in the original, and what would end up happening here is basically Deku would be with Araraka, and Bakugo would be being a jerk, honestly. He would just be sitting there and like looking at Deku and just giving him a death stare and kind of like bumping into him and be like, you're up second place. You know, like being extremely rude to Deku. And Araraka would wonder why he lets that slide, like why he just lets him do that. Deku would say that once upon a time they were actually best friends when they were kids and that as soon as Bakugo unlocked his quirk he became pretty arrogant and thought that he was better than everybody else saying that Bakugo just developed a god complex and that was really all there was to it there was nothing else nothing less but Araraka would understand and say so you guys are childhood rivals then I guess I won't get in your way but just let me know if you need anything okay and she gives him a really bright smile that Izuku would look at and just feel like just happy like he sees her smile and he's like he just feels like his heart just kind of like like melts like he, he just feels as if like that cold that Bakugo just put him through just like went away completely and he looks at her Araka and he smiles back and he's like yeah from here, they both end up pretty much going towards the direction of the, you know, the, the building. And as soon as All Might blows the whistle, all of them end up pretty much walking in. And Bakugo looks at Ida and goes, hey, four eyes, you better make sure you take care of the bomb, okay? And Ida's like, how dare you speak to your fellow student? But Bakugo would just leave the room and Ida would say like that. As, you know, Bakugo goes down the building and he's shooting explosions, making his way towards Deku as fast as possible, right? Izuku hearing the explosions coming very close and sensing Bakugo's key get closer and closer would look to Araraka and tell her that for now, all he wants her to do is go outside and to just trust him. From here, Araraka just nods and she's like, well, I would go to the bomb room, but if you say so, and Izuku just looks at Araraka and he's like, trust me, I got this. From here, 
She does so, and Izuku would just be waiting by the corner as Bakugo throws an explosion and comes right into the same, uh, you know, the the same walkway that Izuku's in. When Bakugo's there, he looks around and he's like, "Deku, come out, come out wherever you are, right?" And Deku comes in from the corner and just punches Bakugo straight in the jaw, sending him crashing into the wall. He gets up and he's like, we're playing with sucker punches, huh? And so he throws a huge explosion at Deku and Deku jumps back, dodging it. From here, you know, he begins getting into his fighting position and him and Bakugo begin swapping hands. You know, they're like actually fighting. They're brawling. This is like a Dragon Ball style fight where both of them are just fighting as fast and strong as they can. They're landing blows. But the one that's actually having the upper hand at this current moment is Bakugo. He's landing more and more blows on Izuku and he's being able to use his explosions to accelerate his movements and move in a way that Izuku is just not used to. His fighting style is so damn unorthodox that he was not prepared for this. And so it would begin catching him off guard but slowly but surely, Izuku would begin to kind of begin to trace Bakugo's movements I guess you could say and like understand them. He's learning as he fights. So he would finally be able to dodge and counter attack more and more and eventually Bakugo would kick Izuku back sending an explosion to give them enough distance and then saying it's ready as he pulls the pin off one of his gauntlets and it just shoots a massive explosion into the building which actually would rattle everything and Ida would be up on top of the bomb room just wondering like what's going on down there right Uraraka is watching the building shake and Izuku after being hit with that explosion would be sent back flying right like after this he he felt pain he felt that like this is not just some normal explosion that it's like oh he could walk right through it no Izuku felt that he's flesh and bone he's a man just because he's buff just because he's powerful doesn't mean he doesn't feel pain and th that's how I feel when I play basketball because you know people think just because I'm tall like I don't have feelings like like I don't feel pain when they shove into me with their elbows and just because they're like two 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 inches shorter than me they think that's cool I'm sorry guys I I needed to vent somewhere but <laughs> anyways um Izuku basically gets enraged right like his eyes change from their normal state to his wrathful form and Izuku is like like his his shirt is ripped like it's, it's gone and he just looks at you know Bakugo and he's like no more Bakugo he rips his shirt off and his eyes are just glowing and he's like no more he walks straight through the explosion and there's like no injuries on his body it was just clothes and tatters and he's enraged and his muscles buffed up way more and Bakugo's looking at Deku and he's like what but from here he kind of has like a, a little bit of a flashback like like uh those Vietnam flashbacks like he's terrified right and Bakugo looks at Deku and Deku's not playing. Like, I'm sorry, Bakugo, but you're about to get beat. And that's exactly what happens. Deku rushes in and grabs Bakugo by the throat and smashes his face onto the wall and begins dragging his face across the entire wall, like, building thing. From here, Deku then throws him into the into another room, and Bakugo would finally activate like full cowling, like as max as he possibly can, trying to get up and dodge. But Bakugo grabs him by the leg, not letting him explode away. And when Bakugo tries to use an explosion in Deku's face, it just pisses him off more. So he gets even stronger and he grips Bakugo's leg, pretty much breaking it, and then smashing him into the ground and then throwing him outside of the building entirely. At this point, All Might is like, Stop the battle! Stop the battle! Right? Knowing that. That his successor is about to get his ass whooped right and Deku just continues walking like just menacingly he flies over to Bakugo and goes to throw another punch right at his face which would have severely damaged Bakugo mind you but All Might grabs his arm and Deku looks at All Might with like this rage in his eyes and he's like let he just can't control himself he sees blur at this point so he like he grabs all might by the head and he like headbutts him right and from here he then pushes all might back and all might is like i don't want to have to do this izuku but you're forcing my hand and he then punches izuku straight in the face and izuku turns his head right back to face all might and he's like funny he spits on the ground and then he punches All Might straight through two buildings as, you know, Ida is already aware that the test was off. So he makes it down to the first room and Bakugo just sitting there with a broken leg, a couple of crushed ribs because he was smashed onto the ground and just bleeding out. And Izuku at this current moment is literally fighting All Might. Like they're all watching as Izuku is just like pummeling all might and like he is literally going at him he's fighting and fighting and fighting and his hair would begin to stand on edge slightly like all might can feel that the rage that deku is feeling is just rising and rising and rising and izuku is a punch 
punch, punch. And All Might is feeling it at this point. Like, he's not playing no more. He's 100% going out. But Izuku is just, like, so unbelievably strong that All Might is getting ragdolled. This has never happened to him. And All Might is getting absolutely beat on until Uraraka comes rushing in. And she's like, Izuku! You know what I mean? And Izuku, hearing her voice, like, kind of sees reason. And his vision, like, kind of comes back. And he sees All Might. And he sees that he was about to punch him again. And then he stops. And he just, like, like walks, like, like takes a couple of steps back and he's like i didn't mean to and all my is just sitting there like in, in a bloody pulp and uraraka looks at him and izuku just looks at uraraka and she rushes in and instead of like feeling fear like the last time she gives him the biggest hug and she's like thought i lost you big guy and izuku like he's sitting there with his muscles bulged and like raised like that that vein in his head slowly begins to dissipate and you know, he like hugs her Raka back and he's like, what happened? And she's like, well, you lost it. I heard Bakugo shot an explosion at you. And from there you got so angry. You just, I guess you must've blacked out. Izuku looks at her and he's like, yeah, I guess I must have. Looks like I need to have more control over my power next time. And you know, he then looks at All Might and he just like helps him up and he puts him on his back and he takes him to recovery girl. From there, he pretty much ends up waiting in the office, just like sitting there with his like legs and just like 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 with his hands in like a ball and like under his chin. And he's like bouncing his knee up and down, like very, very clearly like worried about All Might. But eventually, obviously, Recovery Girl comes out and she's like, huh, kid, you gave us quite a scare there. You banged up All Might pretty bad. I, I honestly haven't seen him in this bad of shape for years now. And Izuku's like, he'll be okay, right? And she's like, yeah, hell, the old guy will be fine. You really did a number on him, kid. And then All Might just goes, can I speak to the kid? And Izuku walks in without Uraraka and Recovery Girl is in there. And, you know, he pretty much ends up telling Izuku, asking him what that power was. That, like, he has never in his life seen power anywhere near that. Like, Izuku was his power was getting stronger and stronger by the second it almost seemed like it was endless and izuku looks at all might and he's like i'm sorry all might i need to learn to control my power still i just have so much of it that sometimes it can overwhelm me and even since sixth grade an incident like this happened once once again i lost it when I, my anger gets the best of me something like this happens i am sorry he, you know, he bows down to All Might and All Might tells him not to be ashamed of what just happened today, that this would have happened to anybody and that he is an exceptional talent and not to let this weigh down on him. But Bakugo was over there with the students pretty much telling them that, you know, he's evil and all that stuff. But this time around, that strategy is not working. Like this time around, Bakugo tried to like make Izuku look out to be like a villain. But like everybody there is just kind of being like, you you started it, Bakugo. Like you think we didn't watch how you pulled an explosion that huge on Deku? You would have done that on any of us and we could have died. You were the first one who tried to kill him. So why was it so bad when he did it back? And people would like, like kind of realize that. Like some people started to believe Bakugo when he said it, like Hiroshima and stuff like that. But then Ida pointed out that he started it and like Todoroki and Momo would even back him up. And from here, Bakugo was kind of put against a corner because it kind of was like brought to everyone's attention that it was his fault. Like it was nobody but his fault that any of this just happened. So Bakugo kind of just has to sit there, grit his teeth and realize that he's in the wrong and he's not going to be coming out on top this time. So essentially what ends up happening is Bakugo's like, whatever, right? And, you know, he just has a couple of people that don't like Izuku now. And basically what ends up happening is they have normal days of school. Obviously, the cafeteria incident would still end up happening. Water break and um, yeah, water break is like, like me, me saying I'm going to take water. <laughs> oh my god <coughs> i'm not cutting this out <coughs> oh my god ah oh, i forgot to drink water for a second mm. i'm not cutting this out <sighs> yeah much better mm. oh wow i almost died <coughs> oh my god okay anyways um no, I need a couple more seconds, guys. I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry for if you guys like really were bothered by this, you could have just skipped it. But anyways, um, what ends up happening here is we end up pretty much getting the USJ incident pretty much roll around the corner. Now, obviously, everybody had to go and get their permission slip signed, just like you would in elementary school. And from here, we pretty much just have a very standard USJ incident, right? 
you know, Ida tells everybody to get out of the bus. Aizawa tells them to pay attention to 13. 13 gives the world's most boring speech and most obvious speech in the world. And eventually Kurogiri appears in the center of the USJ. Oh, sorry. He appears in the center of the USJ, right? And when he does this, Kirishima would lunge in using his uh, hardening quirk to try to pretty much take him out the second that they all realize that this was not a game, right? And, you know, they're doing their absolute best. They're trying very, very hard, mind you, to try to, you know, do something. But eventually what would end up happening here is we get this very, very strange situation, right? Because it's like Kuragiri and the villains are there and, you know, they're trying their absolute best to instill fear on the students and the students gets teleported away. And, you know, when this is all happening, Izuku is kind of like, kind of wary to even act just due to the fact of what happened the last time that he, you know, he fought back. So when he gets teleported towards the portion where the water is at with Mineta and Suyu, he was able to quickly fly out of the water and, you know, locate Mineta. And, you know, Asui was going towards him to save him and she does so. And then from there, they get on the boat, right? Once there, Izuku just looks at them and he's like, don't worry, guys, I'll take care of it. Suyu, I'm going to throw you towards the mainland. You grab Mineta, land safely, and then go towards the rest of the students. She nods, she's like, ribbit. And from here, Izuku grabs them both and just throws Suyu with one arm back to the mainland as, you know, he looks at the water and he's like, all right, guess it's showtime. As from here, he uses just a couple of key blasts and he just flies up into the air and key blasts, key blasts, key blasts, key blasts into the water. Eventually, he realizes that that's not really enough. And so what ended up happening is he throws a punch down into the water so powerful that the that the Air Force would just like blow the water out of the area like a tsunami kind of. And all the villains would be trapped up in it. So they would be very injured and old in one fell swoop would just be taken out instantly. Right. And what ends up happening after this is Izuku goes over towards the direction of Aizawa, but, but but when he sees that, he's like wary to even go help because he's like, will I freak out again? Like, will, will these villains get the better of me? And he's like, not sure. So he goes down to where Uraraka's at and he's like, you guys okay? And Uraraka's like, Izuku, what are you doing? I thought you'd be fighting over there. Izuku looks at her, he looks down, and he's like, honestly, I think I'd be more of a burden if I was down there. And Uraraka's like, you wouldn't be a burden, Izuku. They need you. That rage isn't always a bad thing. With villains, it might be a good thing. She looks at Izuku and she's like, go, you have to act now. And Izuku just looks at her and he's like, you're right. And he like flies down there and he immediately shoots key blasts at a bunch of villains and punch, kick. He just begins to ragdoll a bunch of villains alongside Aizawa, who was getting pretty much overwhelmed like at that moment that he arrived he blows all the villains off of Aizawa and eventually this the Nomu would come rushing in at Deku punching him square in the face sending him flying as Deku is in the crater we see Bakugo flying in with his 100% full cowling as he's like die and he throws an explosion at the Nomu and it's extremely powerful mind you and the Nomu like looks back at Bakugo and he like screeches and it regenerates the head portion that got blown off a little bit and from here, Bakugou gets grabbed by the Nomu and just slammed onto the ground. He's like, every time, you know, just thinking to himself, like, these big dudes always want to slam me and grab me by my head, right? But he, like, he spins midair with his explosions and, he, like, is able to make the zero pointer, uh, I mean, the Nomu let go. He charges up, like, the max one for all percentage he can do. And he just shoots a full power explosion right at the head of the Nomu as he just screams, die and the nomu's head just blow like it just the explosion is so damn powerful and condensed right at the nomu's head that it just exploded and because there was just nothing left of it the nomu just falls to the ground and like pretty much dies and bakugo from here he just looks at the boss villain and he's like you're next but before he could do anything Kuragiri appears in front of bakugo opens a portal for shigaraki and they both leave out of the area before anything else could be done and from here, Deku was just pretty much sat there looking at the back of Bakugo as he just thinks to himself that he was actually able to handle that quite well. And from here, you know, Bakugo looks to him and he doesn't say a word and Aizawa helps Deku up and the cleanup crew happens just like usual. Eventually, after this, we end up cutting into a one week break, which Deku would end up pretty much doing some more training. And this time around, he would do weighted training, which would be very, very beneficial. And by weighted, I mean like on his body to help him like do better. You know what I mean? But he quickly comes to realize that no matter how many weights he puts on, he just can't seem to even feel the effects. Right. So he realizes that he might as well just do like tons of calisthenics. 
because the gym just it just doesn't work anymore and so does weighted training so it just does that and we just pretty much get deku doing his absolute best to try to train and get more stronger but he just kind of can't like the only way that he knows to get stronger is to kind of let his rage control him but when he does that he just can't so what does deku do instead of training he meditates and this would actually help izuku out a lot because it's like meditation would calm his mind his heart and it would let him gain a little bit of control over his wrathful form to the point where he can slightly control it by the end of this one week but nothing too beneficial to the point where he can snap into it and out of it you know without having any repercussions right but um eventually though we do get the usj event happening and the person who does give the speech this time around would still be Izuku. Surprise, surprise. The dude still ended up getting first place in the entrance exam. So he gives a speech. And the first event would still be the basic one, which is just the race. And seeing as Izuku has the ability to blatantly just fly, he's able to very easily just get through the obstacle course and get first place. Leading to the cavalry battle event happening with Izuku actually having um, himself, as well as Araraka, Meihatsume, and Tokiyami in his team when it comes to the cavalry battle. Do I see this part of the story really changing that much? Not particularly. I mean, obviously he has Key Blast, which he can use to knock other teams off of their thing. So this would kind of be something that keeps Bakugo and Todoroki at bay for, I mean, as long as he could possibly do it. But what Deku would pretty much do is he would be the one who pretty much carries the entire team on his back. Um, we would have Meihatsume create like, uh, use one of her babies to pretty much create like a saddle for all of them. And Izuku would carry all of them on his back. Like they're all holding on to him, right? And Deku was just flying into the air, like shooting key blasts to keep people away. Like Bakugo would try to jump off of his people and like fly towards him, but he's not quite able to because Deku would just shoot key blasts. So he would like keep him at distance and just go even higher and higher. And Bakugo's trying his absolute best, but he just can't keep up with Deku at this portion. So he blatantly just has to back off away from Deku and just kind of make it so that Deku who actually ends up getting the dub for this round. That said, we then cut into the 1v1s, and the first battle that we're going to be covering is Deku versus Shinso. Okay, so we pick our story off in a very anticlimactic type of fashion. Now, I know I left the last video off with Deku versus Shinso, and I did that very, very purposefully because that's pretty much where the sports festival ends. I mean, with other what ifs, I could usually say Deku talks to Shinso and he has plot or he has like his mental strength is just so strong that he just can't physically be taken over. But this time, it just doesn't work like that. Deku this time doesn't have any knowledge of the fact that, well, he's going to use something like that. Obviously, even in the original, when Deku spoke to, you know, Shinso, even though he had a, like a warning, he still got caught off guard. And I just generally believe that even this Deku that is like a reincarnate of Broly would still like talk back, mo like even more talk back just because of the fashion that na the nature that Broly has. So what happens here is pretty much Shinso just goes, must be nice to have such a powerful quirk. And Deku goes on to pretty much try to say that it's not as good as he might think, but he's just, he's stunned. Like his body is just not moving. Now, I could take this one of two routes. I could take it the route of since Deku's not in control of his body, it just like, it just snaps into Super Saiyan, like just crazy, but I just don't see that happening. I personally just see him being able to actually be manipulated and walk off the edge. He still doesn't have the mental control necessary to completely overwhelm Shinso's mind control. So Mizuku just loses off rip and Shinso actually this time gets what he wants and is able to move to the second battle, which is going to be against Todoroki. Now, do I think that he's still able to do this to Todoroki? It's definitely going to be more of a, like, will he even get the chance? Because it's like, obviously, Shinzo could probably talk smack and be like, I noticed you don't use your fire side. Like, why is that, you coward? Like, he could probably bait him. But I just generally think that, like, Todoroki is not playing. I think he would just shoot an iceberg at him and just freeze him. That's just what I generally believe would happen. I really don't think Shinzo would even get the chance to do that. Just due to the fact that now Shinzo saw, like, Deku spoke and he was just GG'd. So... I think that that's really how easy that battle would end. And so the final battle would just really come down to Todoroki versus uh, Bakugo. And because Bakugo has one for all, plus explosions, plus he's actually competent, and because he was able to beat him in the original with Todoroki refusing to use his fire side, I think it's just going to be a way easier one-sided stomp. With Bakugo this time not being like, it's not an overwhelming victory, more or less just laughing at the fact that Izuku was beaten by some kid that is so weak 
that he wasn't even able to get into the hero course. Like he, he just holds that over his head and he's just like laughing, having just an absolute blast at the expense of Izuku. Obviously, they all get the medals, and then we cut to everybody pretty much being in the classroom, picking their internship options, and also picking what their hero names are going to be. Now, Izuku, when it comes to what hero name he's going to be picking, he actually ends up going with a god, a uh, let's just say that it's a Greek god in this universe, by the name of Yamoshi. And that's just going to be the name that Izuku generally goes with for his hero stuff when it comes to who he's going to be going with in terms of like who he's gonna be picking for his internship i think that he would definitely pick somebody like best genius just because he's the best hero that offered him something and he feels like best genius is just such a cool comic collected hero that he might be able to learn a couple of things from him i think that bakugo would go with gran torino because he has one for all so that means that deku has absolutely no competition and he's able to pretty much just enjoy being with best genius somebody who has much more of a calm demeanor is just generally just a great guy oh sorry i hit my mic Deku was able to honestly learn quite a lot from Best Genus and the internship opportunity that he's given, and I think that Deku would make the most of this, actually learning a little bit more control over his wrathful state, being able to show it off for just a brief instant while, you know, Best Genus is able to see just how powerful it makes him. They both obviously brainstorm ideas as to how Deku could control his mind, but it would generally come down to pretty much meditation and learning to control his body and his emotions more and more and more. And that's just what Deku's going to be working on in terms of his strength and, you know, his conditioning and his mental prowess and state. And when it comes to Bakugo, he does end up having to deal with the stain incident. Except I don't think Ida would actually end up getting saved by Bakugo just because I don't think he's looking for Ida at this moment. I don't think he's there for that. I think he's taking care of Nomu's and Ida would pretty much be unable to continue trying on his path to become a hero. Because I think Stain would, because he's not a full-fledged hero, and because he was going out for revenge, I think that he pro probably would kill him. But just for this instance, we're going to say that Stain was feeling a little bit nice and just decided to paralyze him instead of kill him fully, right? And that's what ends up happening. So UA goes under a little bit of pressure because of that. But they end up pretty much getting over the hump because Ida makes a public statement that it was his own fault and that, you know, he was vengeful. And if he would have never gone for the hero killer, then all of this could have been avoided. And he did this on his own. And the hero course, just, they couldn't stop him because he ran off away from his hero to do it. So they ultimately forgive him and Ida is obviously publicly stating that UA did not make him say this and that this is something that he did because of his own accord because he would just hate for the students to have to go under just some trials and stuff like that because of his own fault. So UA obviously continues and after this we do get the final exams arc which would pretty much be very very simple and during the time of the final exams and stuff like that Izuku would actually begin getting closer and closer to Uraraka with both of them establishing a lot more of a closer friendship and them both being seen together more often. This would lead to the students in class 1A teasing them a little bit because of just the nature of how often they hang out and Izuku would be fine with that he doesn't really care. Uraraka is a little shy, but you know, she's not willing to admit that she likes him quite yet. They definitely like each other though. And one day, Izuku would pretty much end up asking Uraraka if he can go study at her place. They do so, and pretty much one thing leads to another with them watching movies on the couch and, you know, kind of forgetting about studying. Eventually, they kind of like look at each other and then, time skip, they had a pretty good time. Obviously, you know, they got to know each other and they did what most teenagers do when they're alone. And... Um, what happens after this is basically just that Izuku is able to go back to school and feel great. You know, he, he takes his test, he aces it, and Uraraka feels pretty happy. You know, now they're a little bit more open with, you know, how they feel towards each other. And Deku is able to actually fight against All Might in his wrathful state for just long enough for him to pretty much, um, like not fight him per se, but like kind of like push him out of the way and just like, 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 like pretend he's in the NFL and he was just trying to like bulldoze his way through. That's pretty much what Izuku did. He just came in, bam, right to All Might's face and ran straight through the finish line. He passes and then we eventually cut to the forest training arc, which, um, what really does change here? Okay, so they still do have the Vanguard action squad because Shigaraki still wants to kill All Might. But this time around, they don't exactly try to get Bakugo because it's like... 
I mean, he's not showing evil tendencies. So this time they're really just here to try to take out the successor, which is Bakugo. So they are trying to kill him this time, not just take him. And uh, they are also trying to kill that kid that gave them issues. So this time they would come in with the Vanguard squad with a couple of no moves that they wouldn't have had in the original. And even all for one would be present and part of this attack that would be placed on UA. And because of the nature of how the forest training camp is, I'm just not going to be really paying too much general attention to this part of the story. Just because, like, do you guys really want to hear about things that you guys saw in the anime and that it's pretty much just constant? I don't think you guys do. So we're just going to be picking this part off where Izuku is chilling with Koda and trying to get him to understand that, you know, like, not all heroes are bad. Q, Muscular's entrance. And when Muscular gets there, he pretty much begins to do his usual thing of trying to talk smack and being like, hey, you know where Katsuki Bakugo is? When Deku hears Bakugo's name, he's like, why do you want to find him? And he's like, oh, I want to find him to make him croak. And after Deku hears that, that's pretty much all he needs. He's already getting angry and he then looks at Koda and he's like, you, you, you killed my parents. And when Izuku just looks down at Koda and just sees that fear and like just that 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 rage that's in Koda's eyes and that it was Muscular's fault that a kid, a kid feels the way that Koda does, this would immediately push Deku over the edge and Deku would look at Koda gritting his teeth with balling his fist up while looking at him and saying, Koda, get as far away from here as possible now. And Koda looks up at Izuku and he can see that his eyes change color and that like rage is clearly overwhelming Deku. And Koda does not question him. He immediately goes away and Deku would look at Muscular as he's like, <laughs> looks like you're also a meathead. Let's see just who, let's see just which one of us is stronger. He comes in and tries to punch at Deku for like a, a punch clash, but it, it's over. Deku grabs his, his punch with one hand and crushes his fist and Muscular expands his muscles trying to like punch deeper and like try to actually hurt Deku. But Deku grabs Muscular by the, um, by the head and just smashes his head into the mountainside and muscular is just out cold like he pushed he plunged his head into the into the um the like the wall so hard that muscular was just knocked out a bit of his head even caved in but after this deku rushes towards koda grabs him and rushes him to aizawa where aizawa is actually now in charge of taking care of him and izuku sees that a bunch of the pro heroes are actually being um overwhelmed by a bunch of gnomes this means that Tokiyami and Duple Arms would have a lot harder of a time to save him, but eventually they would encounter Bakugo and Todoroki, and they would be able to save him with Duple Arms having a bit more damage than in the original. Deku at this current moment is currently trying to fight against a couple of Nomus that are there, and he is actually beginning to feel a little bit of sweat because it's like these Nomus are actually quite formidable, and they're even more powerful than the one that actually punched him straight to the ground at the USJ. So Mizuku is fighting them and, you know, he just remembers one thing that Araraka says to him, that it's basically that his anger is not a bad thing, that his anger could save so many lives because of how strong it makes him. And that if he just learns to control it, he could be anyone's hero, that he's her hero. Right. And Izuku, like once he remembers this moment with Uraraka, he kind of just like lets his restraints fully go. And for the first time in forever, Izuku just screams. He's like, ah, you know what I mean? Like he lets his rage out fully and he blitzes at one of the Nomu's directions, throwing one into the air as it like flies up there. And Izuku just jumps up and like straight mouth beam erases it. And then other Nomu's like come flying in and they try to attack him. But Deku grabs them by their heads and just bam key blast right at their skulls like it just kills them instantly right and once he does that the normal's heads just regenerate so deck was like okay so he uppercuts um uppercuts them and sends them flying up and then he shoots a eraser cannon at them right and this eraser cannon just obliterates those gnomus, right? Like they're gone from existence. Three high-end gnomus were just killed instantly by Deku. And suddenly, the, you know, the rest of the heroes that were there, like Mandalay and the pussy wild wild pussycats, were able to be like, it's incredible, right? And Deku is able to pretty much just jump away and go look for anybody that needs help. This is when he would encounter that one kid that almost got cut by the Nomu that had like a chainsaw arm and Deku would blast a hole straight through its head, leading to the kid behind it being like, thank you. And Izuku just like flying off, eventually seeing a portal open as he could sense a very powerful and ominous key in the area. When Izuku senses this, 
he's like i've never sensed anything like this like he's he's genuinely feeling like this might be a bit of a threat right but because he's not able to quite literally like fight him or like be that close that like he can see what he looks like he just has this general idea in his head he would waltz over towards the direction of one for all for one and all for one would begin to pretty much do the iconic evil clap and laugh that everybody every villain does he begins to tell izuku that he has been giving his men quite a few problems and asking him if he would be willing to maybe negotiate a little deal between them two businessmen you know both of them would make a little deal he gets out of the way of the heroes and he gets out of the way of the villains it's something that would help and benefit everybody offer one looks at deku and says hey look i know you're powerful but i know that you're gonna make the right choice as a smirk would come over all for one's face but he can't see it because he has a mask offer one then looks at izuku and goes i got a little secret for you kid you know you say yes your mother lives you say no she dies and izuku looks at offer one and he's like what are you talking about and offer one just says simple we've captured your mother i know blatantly well that you're far stronger than me and if i was to fight you well that wouldn't be very much in my favor so you quit becoming a hero and die now and your mother lives and izuku's eyes like his vision just it disappears izuku looks at all for one and he's so mad he doesn't even have his re like like his sense of reasoning just disappears izuku just looks at all for one and can only think kill 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 it's a moment where he lets out a rage so primal that his hair spikes up and lightning would strike the ground izuku looks at the direction of all for one and says what her Go! you know what i mean kind of like when paragus died he snaps into super saiyan and with this power comes so much speed that when he blitzes at all for one and like goes to just grab him and like body slam him all for one literally gets ripped in half bro it's insane how strong deku is could you imagine having broly rush at you and just punch you like that bro it's not normal like izuku kills all for one and after he does this he just continues beating at all for one's bloody corpse just on the ground until eventually other heroes would arrive in the area and they would just look at deku in his just rageful state and they want to calm him down but they know they can't so they keep their distance and deku just goes haywire in the forest he begins to pretty much cause explosions everywhere key blasts are flying the forest is burning and he's becoming the greatest threat to the heroes as of this current moment Eventually, though, Uraraka comes rushing in and she's like, Izuku, Izuku, right? Like she's calling for Izuku and Izuku's like, like he, he can't hear her this time, but she like rushes in regardless of what anybody thinks and they try to stop her, but she goes rushing in and she like just jumps on Deku and she like hugs him and Deku was like, get off me, you know, he like grabs her tightly and he's about to throw her off. But his vision, like, like the blurriness slightly goes away. And, like, hearing her voice call to him slowly brings him back to reason. And he's able to snap out of it just long enough to realize that it's Uraraka and that he was about to hurt her. And he finally, like, his power just dissipates. And, like, a bloody fist, like, he sees it and he just hugs her. He doesn't care. He's like, like, I almost hurt you. Uraraka, through teary eyes, just looks at Deku and is like, I don't care. And they have, like, this embrace... And we eventually cut to, you know, Izuku and everybody being in the infirmary and, you know, everybody just kind of telling Izuku that he was great out there. And, you know, the, the hero is pretty much covering the situation up for Izuku so that he could continue to become a hero because All, for, All Might was actually the one who would like plead for Izuku, saying that that is the greatest villain that the world has ever known and that he was needed. He needed to be killed eventually that villains like that shouldn't even be allowed to live. So the hero commission would allow Izuku to go back on the condition that he never kills anyone again, saying that killing is like prohibited to heroes. And Izuku would understand and pretty much like not be allowed to go take the provisional license thing. So that whole entire arc is skipped. But we do end up jumping into the overhaul arc with Mirio obviously challenging everybody in class 1A and pretty much saying that, you know, they're going to have an all out battle and that, you know, it's going to be a lot of fun. And it actually is a lot of fun because Mirio is able to show just how big the difference between third years and first years is. It's so large that a, one student could actually defeat the entire bunch of them. And Izuku wouldn't have even been present for that because, like I said, he's not taking the provisional hero license thing. So he was busy trying to take it with Todoroki and Bakugo. 
And because he's there, Mirio doesn't get to meet the strongest character of the, you know, the classroom, but eventually he would hear stories about it. So he would ask Izuku, like when he sees him in campus, ask him to go with Nidai. And Izuku, he'd be like, what do I have to lose? He goes with Nidai, and because he doesn't have one for all, this means that Izuku doesn't have any prejudice from Nidai. And this would generally lead to Izuku being able to have a best, better time than he would in the original, which would obviously lead to him encountering Eri. And what would happen this time is very anticlimactic. I mean, when Izuku sees Eri, a small girl who's completely indefenseless and has literally not even lived long enough of a life to have caused problems for anybody or even become a threat to anybody whatsoever, Izuku gets royally pissed. But because he knows that he can't kill this guy, he just blitzes in and like punches Overhaul. Like he gives him the craziest uppercut, right? And Overhaul is already like unconscious from that. But then he flies up after him and grabs him by his leg and just bam, smashes him into the earth. And Mirio watching this is like, bro really took the strongest like villain that we've been after for months in like five seconds. And Eri just watches Izuku land down like flying and she sees like a god almost in, in Izuku. And he just gets down on one knee and he's like, you okay? She nods and she's like, what's your name? And Izuku says, name's Izuku, what's yours? She's like, uh, Eri? And from here, Izuku just goes on to say, well, Eri, you never got to worry about that bad man ever again. She nods and they pretty much take her into UA where finally... All of the conflicts of the My Hero Academia story have been resolved. Even in the original story, we know that All for, All for One is literally the final villain. And with Overhaul being the like last kind of quest villain, it's pretty much it for the story. What if Deku was Broly's reincarnation essentially just ends here, and Izuku from here on out just goes on to deal with normal school events, practicing on his abilities that he has, and getting stronger and stronger as the years progress. Finally learning to let go of that crutch of not using his anger. Finally learning to utilize it in a good way and learning about the Super Saiyan uh, transformation, finally achieving it so that, you know, he was able to, you know, live a very, very good life. He went on to become the number one hero, and eventually after just a bit of time would pass by, Bakugo would finally get over his resentment that he feels towards Izuku, and both of them were able to generally move past that without too many issues getting in the way. That said, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like. If you didn't, then uh, leave a like. And I'll see you guys next time. Anyways, peace.